If you're looking to pick up a video editing laptop right now, you pick the perfect time to make a purchase because right now the 2023 models are coming out in the spring to summer, which means all the 2022 models are starting to go on sale. And a lot of those 2022 models are more than capable for your needs. And we're going to talk about the specs, the reasons why you should buy a 2022 model, or the reasons why you should wait for a 2023 model heading into the future. Now, first and foremost, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of the models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, looking at the quote unquote entry level laptops, these are going to be for 1080p and some light 4K. And these laptops are going to start around the $650 range and then work their way up into the $1,000 range. Now, the reason I'm starting you off at around the $650 range is because I don't want you to get a laptop that underperforms and disappoints you. I cannot, in my right conscience, recommend a you know cheap, quote unquote, laptop that will not perform how you want it to. You want it to play smooth playback. You want it to not lag. You want it to not be glitchy and have the you know apps crash on you on the middle of video editing. And that's why I start you with the i5-1240p. Now keep in mind, I am one who thinks that you should get the laptop that works best for you and has the performance you need. So if you're looking for a slightly older model to save even more money, I would consider two processors from Intel, the i7-1165G7 or the i5-1135G7. If you can find a laptop with that processor, that will be enough for 1080p video editing. If you're getting into 4K, I think these newer processors, the i5-1240p and the i7-1260p, as well as the i7-1255U are great for 4K video editing. Now, looking at the HP Pavilion Plus, you can see we also have a processor with the Ryzen 5 5625U. I think that processor is great for 1080p and some light 4K video editing. And that processor is a little bit older. Hopefully you're catching my drift here. You don't have to get the newest or the latest and greatest to still have a great laptop. You just have to make sure you make the right choice. Now, the latest Ryzen 7 6800U is fantastic and kills it for some 4K video editing. Not complex 4K video editing with tons of motion graphics and all kinds of features and B-roll and color grading, but some nice light 4K, one or two cameras, light color grading, that will be suitable. Now, as we look at the RAM, RAM is something that's really important for video editing. You can see that some of the laptops on this lineup have eight gigs of RAM. And for 1080p, that's not a huge deal. Eight gigs of RAM will work. However, when you get into 4K, it takes a little bit more for the program to process that 4K footage on your timeline, and you will have a laggy experience if you have too many programs running at once. For those who are new to the idea of RAM, basically what RAM is, RAM is the temporary memory that your computer uses to open and run programs. The more RAM you have, the more multitasking capability your computer has in lingo with the processor you are using. Now, eight gigs of RAM can be used up rather quickly. Let's say you open Google Chrome, that uses anywhere from two to three gigs of RAM. You open Spotify, one to two gigs of RAM, and then you open Premiere Pro, and that can use anywhere from four to even like 10 gigs of RAM, depending on how much stress you're using that program with. If you're using like heavy 4K footage or 6K footage, it can, it can load up on RAM rather quickly. So if you only have eight gigs, there you go. You've already spent all your RAM and your computer may start to bottleneck, which is why I recommend for 4K or 6K timelines, as in you're using 4K and 6K footage, you have 16 gigs of RAM or above. In the drop frames test that I've ran in the past, I started a laptop at eight gigs of RAM and it dropped anywhere for around a thousand frames for 4K video editing. When I increased it to 16 gigs of RAM, it ended up dropping in the you know hundreds to you know fifties even. And then when I took it to 32 gigs of RAM, it had no drop frames. And so this was a couple of years ago that I ran this test and I saw very quickly and very clearly that RAM was very effective in improving timeline playback in Premiere Pro. So if you get an i5-1240p laptop with 16 gigs of RAM, it will perform better in the timeline playback, as in when you're editing your footage in Premiere Pro, than the same laptop with eight gigs of RAM with the i5-1240p. Now, another reason that a laptop will be more affordable is color gamut range. What happens is they could take a nice, powerful laptop, slap a affordable screen on it, and then give you a more affordable laptop. However, that affordable laptop with that affordable screen will not give you good color gamut range. So when you're color grading your, you know, your footage or your, your project, 
And then you go and you take it maybe to your TV, you can be like, whoa, why does my project have this green hue to it? Well, the color accuracy and reproduction of your screen was low, which didn't allow you to match the colors correctly, and then you took it to something more higher quality, it showed the air in the screen you were using. And so color accuracy, if that is important to you, if you really find color grading and color accuracy important, make sure you get a laptop with a 100% sRGB color gamut range at minimum. I always like to look for Adobe RGB at the max level if possible. So I want like 95, 90%, 100% Adobe RGB that has a larger color gamut range. If you wanna know more about color gamut range, color accuracy and all the intricacies of that, I have full tech terms videos on my channel. Just go over to my channel, hit the little search button on my channel profile and you can find those videos to help you understand more why it matters for color gamut range on a laptop. Now the first laptop with great color gamut range on this lineup is going to be the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. I think this laptop is great for color gamut range and color accuracy. The OLED screen is 100% sRGB and has high 90s in the Adobe RGB. It's gonna have great performance with the i5 1240p. It's gonna be great for 1080p and 4K video editing and it all comes in at around $750, which is a great bang for buck for that laptop. Now the next laptop I would consider is the Asus ZenBook Flip 15. That's the laptop I have right here. This one's about $1,400. And the reason I included it in this more entry level lineup area was because this is a ZenBook and that more affordable one was a ZenBook. So I kind of wanted to keep them together. Now this has the latest Intel Arc GPU. Great for 4K video editing, great for battery life. I was amazed. I was able to get 10 hours of battery life out of this laptop on productivity while the GPU was still running. And this has an i7-12700H series processor. That's a high performance processor that is found in a lot of gaming laptops and makes a great laptop for 4K video editing. This thing really didn't manage well for 6K because the graphics card in this laptop, the A370M Arc GPU is actually a four gig VRAM card. If you're gonna get into 6K video editing, I recommend anything six gigs of VRAM and above. That would be something like the RTX 3060 or the five series from the Arc GPUs. Um, that is what I'd be looking for. Or if you're getting a Radeon, it'd be the RX 6700S or above. That's really a recommendation for 6K video editing, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, next up on the list is the Acer Swift 3 14 inch OLED. Now this lacks a dedicated GPU, which is why I have it in the category for 1080p and some light 4K video editing. The i7-12700H and the i5-12500H are, are great processors, excuse me, for video editing. However, the lack of a dedicated GPU would keep this thing at 1080p and 4K. I would not push this thing towards 6K. It will not fare well. Now, the reason I love this laptop is it's in the, in the $850 to $1,000 price range, and it has an OLED display, which is 100% sRGB color accurate with a high Adobe RGB color accuracy as well. So great laptop, great bang for buck. However, lacking the dedicated GPU keeps it in this lower resolution area of the video. Next up is the Lenovo Yoga 7i and 9a, a little more on the expensive side as far as its performance capabilities, but it is well built. It's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, and so, I don't have one right here in the studio with me right now, but the screen is very similar to this laptop. This is the HP Spectre. So it's got this tall aspect ratio, more square form factor screen, though it's not a perfect square. It almost looks like an iPad is sitting on your laptop. It looks really great. Now, the Lenovo Yoga 7i also has a very large trackpad like this Spectre. So it's just a great all around laptop that would be good for video editing, but with the lack of a dedicated GPU uh, and it being a little more on the expensive side, I wouldn't make it like my cornerstone video editing laptop. All right, next up on the lineup, and again, in this video, I'm talking about my favorite laptops from 2022. So if the laptop you don't see on here is missing that you're considering, it's not because I don't think that laptop is good. It just wasn't one of my favorites or my top recommendations of laptops from 2022 heading into 2023. I hope that makes sense. Now the HP Victus and the HP Omen are good. Don't get me wrong. I think they're good laptops. I just don't think that they are holding up to the build quality of something like the Legion series. The Legion series for around the same price point, you can get the same performance, if not a little bit better, more customization within the command center, Lenovo Vantage Center, which means you can control the GPU, the CPU, how the battery functions, the lighting. There's just so much more functionality in the Legion series laptops compared to the Omen and the Victus which is why I do include the HP Victus and the HP Omen in this video. However, I'm not jumping up and down saying you need to buy that. Um, it just overall does not have as much bang for buck as the Legion series. 
Now the Lenovo Legion 5, this is an interesting laptop because as you see on the specs, I have this laptop listed for the Ryzen 6 5600H and the Ryzen 7 5800H, which technically since the announcement of Ryzen 7000 is a two generation old CPU. However, if you're looking at 4K video editing, that is plenty of power for 4K video editing. If you're serious about 6K, I recommend getting that laptop with the RTX 3060. If you're just doing some 4K video editing, the Ryzen 5 5600H and the RTX 3050 Ti will be enough for you. It'll be plenty of power for 4K video editing. You can get that laptop for around the $750 to $850 range. Great bang for buck. It'll come with eight gigs of RAM, but because the Legion 5 is so easily upgradable, you can upgrade that to 16 or 32 gigs down the road when your budget increases. So for me, this is one of the best bang for buck laptops that you can get, and they're on crazy sale right now. And especially internationally, if you're somebody from interna my, my international viewers, especially India, I know a lot of y'all aren't seeing a lot of discounted laptops from the 2022 models, but can you find a Lenovo Legion 5 discounted, or maybe even an Asus Tough discounted? Those are two great laptops that you can find on a deal. Now, as we're going through this video, if this video is bringing you some value, definitely just gently caress that like button because it'll let other people know that this video is great and should be good for them and YouTube will push it out to them. So go ahead, give it a nice little tap and we'll keep moving forward. So that's my big plug for 2021 and 2022 models, right? Now the 2023 model, they don't even really carry the Legion 5. It's now the Legion 5 Pro? Legion Pro 5? Legion Pro 5. So it's now the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 or the Lenovo Legion Pro 7. They went ahead and mixed up the wording on us. Um, and so that this Legion Straight 5 really doesn't exist anymore in their lineup. So it's going to be something that you'll find 2021 and 2020, maybe 2022 models. I didn't see many 2022 models even available. Okay, before I hang on too long, let's get into the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. This laptop is great if you want a thin and light on-the-go 4K video editing laptop. It's one of the best performing laptops with the i7-1260P from 2022, and I'm sure they're gonna have some great sales on it. Again, links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I get a small commission. Super grateful when y'all use those. Acer Swift X. This is, in essence, an Acer Swift 3. If you look, they're like literally doppelgangers. However, this has the i7-12700H and an OLED screen and lacks a dedicated GPU. This has the i7-1260P with a dedicated RTX 3050 Ti GPU. If you're gonna do 4K video editing and even light, 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 light 6K video editing, this would be the choice. However, it's going to lack the color accurate OLED display. So basically you're exchanging an OLED display for a GPU. Which one do you want more is the question that you have to answer for yourself. Do you want color accuracy in the Swift 3 or do you want a little bit more GPU performance in the Swift X. Now, one of my favorite laptops of the past two years is going to be the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13, okay? This laptop comes with an RTX 3050 Ti. However, you can also hook in a full-size RTX 3080 right here into the ROG port, the Republic of Gamer GPU port, okay? Now, this is called the XG Mobile that you can hook into here, the RTX 3080, which makes this like an on-the-go video editing, 3D modeling, you know, destroyer. Now, this is a great laptop because if you turn off the dedicated GPU, that Ryzen 9 6900HS is a killer laptop for battery, killer laptop, killer processor for battery life. About 13 hours of battery life, I was able to get out of this laptop. Now, one downside to this laptop for the past two years is I've always complained about this tiny little trackpad that they have. Now, in the 2023, this trackpad's getting a major upgrade, and it's going to be as big, maybe as big, I think really close to as big as this laptop here. I mean, look how big that trackpad is. So imagine this trackpad on the X13. That's what we're, we're possibly looking at. Maybe not that big, but, but I'm really hoping so. So keep that in mind. If you want a larger trackpad, wait out for 2023. If you want to find this laptop on a deal, then 2022 is the way to go. It's around $1,199. This laptop retailed at about $1,599. So you can save about $400 choosing last year's model. Grab yourself a $25, $30 mouse and you're off to the races. <clears throat> Great laptop, 4K video editing, light 6K. Don't get too aggressive with this thing. It's only a four gig VRAM card but one of my favorite laptops from the year. Next up is going to be the absolute best bang for buck on this entire lineup, and that's the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the RX 6700S GPU. Eight gig VRAM card, killer 6K video editing laptop, destroys 4K like it's sleeping. Um, well, like it's, as in like destroys 4K in its sleep. That's kind of what I mean. 
So keep in mind that this laptop normally retailed for about $1,649. I've heard rumors in the comment section of people getting this thing for $999, $999. But right now I've seen it on sale for about $1,199. Now that is US deals. I'm not sure what you can get international, but right now Best Buy is blowing out huge sales on that laptop. Okay, the next laptop to consider is the Apple MacBook Air M2 and Pro M1. Now the reason I have those two together is because they're kind of the same price point. Those will be good for 1080p and light 4K video editing and they're a great price point. If you're somebody who wants to get into stronger, more robust 4K video editing, I would recommend the MacBook Pro 13 M2. It's gonna have more performance. The reason the M1, uh, the reason the Air M2 um, isn't as good for full 4K is because it only has one fan, so it's gonna use some thermal throttling to keep the laptop cool, whereas the Pro has two fans, so it can run a little bit more performance and the fans can keep the laptop cooler. Personally, I think the best bang for buck from the Apple lineup right now, especially with a lot of the sales that are running, is the MacBook Pro 13 M2, especially for video editing. One of my personal favorite laptops from last year and from the year before would be the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. The Lenovo Legion Slim 7 comes with an SD card reader. I know a lot of cameras that are shooting 4K video are SD cards, so you can pop your footage right there and on the side, but you also have two USB type A's on the left side panel and a selection of USB, sorry, USB type C's on the left side panel and USB type A's on the back side panel. It's thin and light. It has good battery life. It has, this is the full AMD version, so it has the Ryzen 9 6900HX and the RX 6800S this thing is bumping in performance, has a color accurate display. I mean, it's just, it's a great laptop. And right now I think it's on sale for about $1699. Normally this laptop, if I'm not mistaken, was $1999. So about $300 off roughly, give or take. Again, always check the links in the description for the exact live pricing. Prices are subject to change according to FTC regulation. I have to say that. Next up is the king of bang for buck. And that is the Legion 5i and 5 Pro. These laptops are insanely on sale right now for about $1,450. How they're doing this, I have no idea because this outperforms three to $4,000 laptops, even when it's simply the i7-12700H and RTX 3060 version. I've never even been able to test a 3070 Ti version. I've never been sent one, but I cannot imagine how much performance a 3070 Ti version of the Legion has. I mean, it would have probably the, the performance of a $5,000 laptop. Now, I'm really hoping next year that we get an AMD Advantage version of this laptop. I think it performed insanely well with the Ryzen 7 6800H and RTX 3060. I think it was great, but I cannot imagine if they hooked it up like they do with the Legion 7 with AMD Advantage and the optimization of the Legion 5. I feel like they put so much focus into the Legion 5. I feel like it's their like golden child of Legion laptops because the Legion 7 AMD Vantage version did good, but it didn't perform as well as the Lenovo uh, Legion 5, which was like half the price. I mean, it just, I don't know. They just put so much effort into this laptop. It really shows. It's super optimized. Tons of ports and connectivity, great trackpad, great keyboard, 16 inch panel. Um, and like I said, it's like 14 to $1,600 right now, depending on how you get it configured. You can even get it for around $1,200 if you get the um, RTX 3050 Ti version, which for some, for 4K, that I mean, that could be plenty of power for you. All right, next up on the lineup, and again, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, my children are playing with their friends, and so, yeah, that's 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 that. Next up is the MSI Creator M16. This would be my favorite MSI laptop. It's a good bang for buck as far as price is concerned. Some of the MSIs, in my opinion, get a little too expensive. When you get into like the Z series, they just are a little more pricey than I would personally feel comfortable spending. Especially that the performance doesn't really negate, doesn't really, not negate, does, the performance doesn't really uh, consider the price. Like it's just not bang for buck. And I think the MSI Creator M16 is kind of the sweet spot for the MSI laptop. Now, if there's two laptops on this lineup that deserve complete comparison, it is going to be the Lenovo Legion 7, which I just talked about a minute ago, and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16. This is the laptop that I think Asus took all of their learnings from the past three to five years and built this laptop. It has a large trackpad. It has the Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor. It has a 16 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio mini LED display, which is both color accurate and bright. It's a two-in-one laptop, so you can use it as presentation mode for the video you just created or as a way to work on digital art. Also has upward facing speakers for a better audio experience. And that was kind of loud. It's thin and light. I mean, 
come on. The only thing this thing missing is an SD card reader, which is where the Slim 7 comes in. The Slim 7 comes with the SD card reader, the 16 inch panel, the great, the good battery life. The X16 has about 10 hours of battery life. The Slim 7 has about eight hours of battery life. Really the bigger difference is going to be that this is a two-in-one laptop, the X16 with a touch screen and a mini LED display for color accuracy. And this is not a two-in-one laptop. It is not a mini LED display, but it still is fairly color accurate. But I have full comparison videos of these two. Definitely worth considering um, the differences between the two because they're pretty close in price as well. Right now, I think it's like $16.99 for the sale of the Slim and then it's about like $17.49 for the uh, X16. But man, it's so hard because they're both such good laptops. Okay, if you're gonna get into 6K video editing and you wanna look into Apple, I definitely recommend the MacBook Pro 14 M1 Pro. Best bang for buck. If you get the 16 inch model, all you're really getting is a slightly bigger screen. You're not getting that much more performance. So to add the extra six to $800 onto the laptop for that larger screen to me just doesn't make sense. So the MacBook Pro 14 M1 is the best bang for buck for 6K video editing if you wanna do it on Apple. And I, I say that so quickly because I mean, it goes without saying the Apple MacBook Pro is an incredible laptop if you're willing to pay the Apple tax. You get full performance on the laptop, not plugged into the charger. I don't know if you knew this, but when it comes to Windows laptops, if you want the full performance, you have to be plugged into a charger, which for some people, if they're on the go creators can be a hindrance. Whereas with the MacBook Pros, you can be on the go with great battery life and full performance. Big caveat, um, one that goes worth saying, but really the biggest difference between them is the OS and the on the go performance and battery life, uh, Windows versus P uh, Mac. All right, next is the Lenovo Legion 7 AMD version. This laptop, the AMD version was more, in my opinion, the 3D modelers kind of sweet spot or architecture. I would honestly consider the Lenovo Legion 7 non-AMD version. I would get it with an RTX 3070, 3070 Ti, uh, and you might be able to get it for the same price, if not a little bit less. The live pricing right now, I think is around $27.99. Um, and so with that in mind, it's not the cheapest laptop and it didn't have the best performance in video editing. So keep in mind that it is a great laptop. It does have a lot of connectivity. It's lacking an SD card reader, which is why I think the Slim 7 is my favorite pick actually over the original Lenovo Legion 7. And it's thicker, heavier, a little more chunky on the go. It's quite a heavy laptop. It's around six pounds, um, where the Legion 7 Slim is in the more of the five pound range. So Personally, I'm a big fanboy of the Legion Slim 7 over the full AMD 7. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna get into like the most unique and I think like advantageous laptop for creators. And that's the two laptops from Asus that have the dial. Now this is the Asus ZenBook Pro 16X OLED and this is the Asus StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. Now they both have a dial. This is a mechanical dial that actually moves. It's a full mechanical dial button that clicks and moves. This is a glass dial with a center click button that is mechanical. Now you have a full size glass trackpad on here, which is huge for the ZenBook Pro 16X. And you have a smaller trackpad on the studio book with manual click buttons. I think the manual click buttons are great for 3D modeling and architecture. However, when it comes to video editing, they're kind of uh, get in the way. They're kind of annoying, not gonna lie. And so you wanna make sure that you're okay with these click buttons if you're going 2022. However, if you're going 2023, they have given us a full-size clickable trackpad as opposed to these click buttons. And that, to me, is worth waiting. However, right now, if you're looking for best bang for buck, the 2022 model is gonna be a great price point. And also, the 2022 model, the ZenBook, 16X, the ZenBook Pro 16X is gonna be good as well. I haven't seen any major sales yet, but if you're gonna be getting this, the i7 12700H and the RTX 3060 is great for 4K and some medium 6K video editing. I love the, the Ergo Lift keyboard on the computer. I love the large glass trackpad. Man, it's so click sensitive. It's vibration click, it's very accurate, and I like the dial, it's a little more low key. Overall, it might be weird to you because I've been such a fanboy of the studio book for so long. This is my preferred laptop right now. I just think overall, it's personally a better design. Um, it has the SD card reader, it has multiple uh, USB type C's, and an HDMI, I really am liking the ZenBooks right now. Right now, my on-the-go laptop is a ZenBook Flip 15 with the latest Arc 
uh, A370 GPU, and it just kills it. It's got great battery life, got great on-the-go performance. I can preview my B-RAW with it. It's just spectacular. I really like the Zenbooks right now. It's funny because to me, Zenbooks were almost like the more affordable, kind of cheaper laptops, but the Zenbooks have really stepped it up in the past couple of years while still holding a medium tier price point. I think the Zenbook uh, Flip 15 is around $1,400, has that latest Intel Arc, it has an i7-12700H, and to me, that's a nice mid-tier price point for a thin and light, powerful laptop. Now, this it's a little more expensive. I think this is around $2,600. So it's very equivalent to the StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. But tomato, tomato, let me know in the comment section which laptop you're considering for video editing. I would be super curious. Now, in regards to thinking 2022 or 2023, there are some reasons you might want to choose a 2023 model. You might want to wait out. You might want to wait to see what kind of performance increases are we going to have. But as I've talked about throughout this video, we've had enough for performance for 4K video editing for the past three years and enough performance for 6K video editing in late 2021 and in 2022. Most, you know, professional creative or gaming laptops are fully capable of 4K video editing, especially if you have the H series processor from either Ryzen or Intel and an RTX 3060, which is six gigs of VRAM or above, you're going to be good with 6K video editing. And so really, what are you waiting for in 2023? I'm really curious. Again, you have a large trackpad on the studio book or the X13, the trackpad gets larger, but overall, I haven't seen anything that's really blown my mind and worth waiting for in 2023. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and you're like, all right, I kind of see what you're saying. Let's go snag some deals. Likes of this video has brought you some value and definitely hit that subscribe button to help us reach 100,000 subscribers. See you here in the next video.